This video is brought to you by NordVPN. For an exclusive deal, be sure to check out the link in the description. It'll benefit you, and it'll help us too. Welcome back to another one of our infamous 4chan deep dives. Before we get started, I do want to give an update. This will be the end of the first season of 4chan deep dives. This series will absolutely return, don't worry, but for a little while we'd like to take a break and focus on some other websites that deserve their very own debunk style deep dive. We've mentioned this before, but be sure to send us your creepiest posts from around the internet, whether that be from MySpace, Tumblr, or even TikTok. No social media is ruled out at all, so be sure to send anything you may find. One last thing before we get started, a little content warning. Our last post is quite gruesome, but it is censored. For those who would like to see the video without any censorship, it will be on our Patreon Debunk Plus. Alright, enough talk. It's time for our 10th 4chan deep dive. So as always, sit back, relax, and let's explore this website once more. For our first post, the OP inquires about video game AI that break their coding and seemingly start to think for themselves. Anyone have any creepy stories of AI in games becoming self-aware? I remember reading once that a monster that was meant to be fought late in a game went out of bounds to search for the player in some random RPG. In another, a guy was stalked by an AI. Over the years, there have been tons of stories of Haywire video games. Some of the most classic internet tales are based on this concept. Ben Drowned, Lavender Town, and anything else that could have hyper-realistic detail to spook readers. But of course, we're here to look for the real stuff. Unfortunately, as interesting as it sounded, I couldn't find anything on the RPG monster or the stalking AI. Lucky for us, the thread did have a solid amount of replies, one of which being about a supposed experiment in Quake 3. There's also the Quake 3 experiment, where a bot match was allowed to run for two years, after a while, the bots became passive towards each other, but became violent once a player came in and attacked one of them. This experiment actually draws birth from another 4chan post. In Quake 3, the AI is designed to adapt to specific scenarios, and this OP had the idea to place a bunch of bots into a server to match up against each other, and just leave them there to see what happens. The OP winds up forgetting about all of this for four entire years, where they finally loaded up the game again, all to see that the bots are standing totally still, just looking at each other. He then wanted to see what happened if he himself joined the game, and the results were just as weird. The bots turn to look at him, but none fired. Then he shoots one, and the bots attack him, and before we can find out whether or not they turn their weapons on one another, the server crashes. I did manage to find a Forbes article about this Quake 3 experiment, and their take on it is the same as ours. It's most likely not real, and is impossible to prove, since this was just a 4chan thread and featured no images or videos with it. It actually has since been shown that in a paper from the developers about the Quake bots, they mention how, although neural networks can be useful in several areas in bot AI, they are not used for the Quake 3 arena bot, which effectively debunks this entire story. While those were the two instances mentioned in the thread, I wanted to go search on my own for any other possible examples of video game AI seemingly going haywire, and I did find something. Our one possible legitimate example of self-aware AI comes from Shadow of War's Nemesis system. To briefly explain the Nemesis system in the simplest of terms, enemies will remember you. They remember killing you, being killed by you, and everything in between. It's a brilliant and terrifying idea that gives way to a really freaky story. Coming from Brian Graber on IGN, he explains in how his first playthrough, the first orc you mind control, is Bruise the Chopper, and he isn't randomly generated either. 
every single player must encounter Bruise, albeit he doesn't show up until around halfway through the game. Well, a while after this first playthrough, Brian returned to play again, booting up a new game. Brian is met with a bruise that shouldn't exist at nearly that point in the game, scarred and slurring his words like a late game badly beaten bruise. According to the writer, bruise only appears when your mission is to dominate him during a pivotal story point in the mid-game region of Nern. Instead, I've just been ambushed by this character in what's basically the tutorial zone, and I'm not currently in any story missions, let alone his. His old game was even deleted, so this glitch is pretty much impossible. From Brian's own words, he said, by subverting deletion and death, Bruise the Chopper has already become a bigger and better nemesis to me than Sauron ever could. The various personalities and grudge matches against orcs in Shadow of War have always been a focal point of creating your own memorable stories. But Bruise has taken things to the next level. He's continuing a plot I left unresolved in a previous playthrough and has wasted no time to force a confrontation on his terms, not mine. That terrifies me, and I love it. He mentions how in this state, Bruise doesn't even introduce himself properly, and instead makes bizarre snarls that don't sync up with his animations. As a final note, he mentions getting to the point in the game where you were supposed to meet Bruise, and he's there, completely normally. But there is a catch. He mentions beating this Bruise and making him join his army, but upon returning to the orc army at the starting area of the game, he noticed that the glitched Bruise was still there. So there are now two Bruises in his game. The good thing about all of this is that there is actual picture proof, and even a short video too. And while that definitely does help the validity of all this, there are still ways to fabricate what we are seeing. While it definitely feels more real than any other examples I could find of video game AI seemingly coming alive, I'm still skeptical about whether it is. Faking something like this does come with its loads of advantages, such as the fact that we're even reading this right now, but it is definitely told in a way more grounded way than say a creepypasta. However, this is a professional writer after all. Something that may possibly help its case is something that many game developers on the initial thread were trying to say, and that's basically that glitches are just too unpredictable. Multiple commenters mentioned creating games and not even being able to understand half the bugs and glitches that they produced. Maybe this specific instance was just an extremely unlikely glitch that happened to the writer. One other thing that may help the case of this all is just how IGN works in general. It's no secret that they give very, very positive reviews to lots of games, and it's theorized by many that they're likely paid by companies to do this type of thing. My question now is whether they'd risk purposely publishing a fake article that could effectively make the game look worse, since this would classify as a bad glitch. To me, that doesn't sound very likely. On the other hand, you could say that it's written in a way so that people may want to buy it to possibly experience this extremely rare glitch. Overall, it could truly go either way. Despite that, the concept of it all is still intriguing all the same. If you have any experiences of this sort when it comes to video game AI, we'd love to hear them. Maybe someday far in the future, self-aware video game AI might become common. Our next post is one about a terrifyingly haunted film that made its rounds on 4chan a while back, but came back to the surface in a chilling way. Years ago, some Anon B started making threads about an old film from the early 90s, existing only on one or two VHS tapes somewhere in rural Scandinavia called Nocturnal Pulse. It was supposed to be the real grifter the hyper spooky meme movie that didn't exist but was used to scare newbies. An actual film that would drive you to insanity or suicide. Really quickly, let's explain The Grifter, just in case you all aren't familiar with it. Basically, in 2009, someone came onto the site with a post titled The Grifter, in a purposely vague manner. They simply said, I wish I'd never seen it. I seriously feel disturbed, like it ruined something deep down within my soul. I'll never be the same. Attached to the post were some truly disturbing images, though they were thankfully later proven to be fake, as well as this entire incident. Basically, the whole point of the grifter was to describe being absolutely horrified by it, but you purposely describe it vaguely so that people would ask question upon question. 
It became a major meme on the site, and since this post makes a mention of it, definitely keep that in the back of your mind as we continue. Other Anons chimed in, some dismissive, others claiming to know about the film or even having seen bits and parts of it, all of them agreeing that it was the darkest, scariest shit ever. A short clip was uploaded in one thread around 2009, linked to either YouTube or Vimeo. I don't recall, my memory of the whole shit is hazy. But when I tried to play it, my computer crashed and I had to reboot it. All I managed to see was a fading image of an owl-like bird, but not quite. The eyes seemed human or humanoid, that seemed to look at and pass the viewer, and a sound that I cannot adequately describe or recall. Iron grinding on stone mixed with faraway screams and a low brown notish hum and I had the feeling that my very existence was coming apart. Since then, it's been dead silent. If I make a thread about it on B, it's either ignored and 404 would pruned, or someone might pop up and tell me to never mention that film again. This is the first time I post about it here, on X. Does any of you know about this? After reading the post, before we make our ultimate conclusions, I wanted to see just how many more mentions of this post there were on 4chan, and surprisingly, there was actually a lot. Recently many posters mentioned it being on some sort of iceberg list which I was unaware of, but I was more so curious on finding its much older mentions, if there were any. Lucky for us, there actually is a mention of it as far back as 2011, and with it we begin seeing a common theme when it starts being mentioned. The deepest movie I ever watched in my entire life is hands down Nocturnal Pulse, nothing comes close. It's the deepest because it can only be downloaded from Mariana Webb. This post obviously is written in a snarky fashion, and so are many of the other mentions of it as we can see here. The post that we happened to stumble on when we were looking for topics for this video was not even close to the first one and there had actually been many people asking about the legitimacy of Nocturnal Pulse beforehand. As we can see, many mentions of this film are just like the aforementioned Grifter. People are purposely being vague with it. One thing that has been brought up that I have actually confirmed as seemingly being true is the mysterious gap between any mentions of Nocturnal Pulse, at least ones that I can still view within archives. As I said, the first mention of Nocturnal Pulse that I could find was all the way back in 2011, and after that, I didn't find another until all the way in 2017, where it then became semi-frequent, which is admittedly pretty strange. Even looking past that, the post we originally read mentioned Nocturnal Pulse being talked about as far back as 2009, which could mean another gap happened. However, in general, the way in which Nocturnal Pulse is mentioned as a whole is so similar to the Grifter that I'm convinced it's just another attempt to create a Grifter-like meme. Going back to the original post we found now, the description of the video and what it did to the OP's computer does not read in the most truthful way, and definitely reeks of author feel that we mentioned back in our sixth deep dive, especially with the Grifter-like knowledge we have now. I'm not convinced that this tape ever existed at all. Many of the posts asking about its existence are probably people curious just as we were, but the original post we happen to stumble on may be a little too specifically written to qualify as that. In conclusion, if you want to experience the closest thing you can to Nocturnal Pulse, you should probably watch whatever everybody was watching in the ring. For our third post of tonight's dive, we have someone living on a large piece of land, convinced that something strange might be happening. Something is happening. I live out in the middle of nowhere. I moved here two months ago and my parents are coming to visit me. When I searched my house on Google to give them directions, I noticed a small box behind my house which seems to be a trailer of some sort. I own a lot of land out here. It's my property. I own about three square miles. Now I went out a few minutes ago and the trailer is a three to four minute walk into the woods. There is a light on in the trailer, but there is no road or anything that connects it. It's pretty deep in the woods. The road I live on goes far out and I'm the last house on this street. I'm thinking about going to investigate it. Should I? Now this is a lengthy thread, as many questions would be asked and many more will be answered, so I'll only be reading the most important of ones. 
After this post, people naturally wondered whether maybe a homeless person was living in there, and also asked for pictures, which were given. Eventually, the OP would go out to investigate, saying the following. Right, guys, sorry to break the bad news. It turns out somebody is in fact living there, and has been living off the land for around a year now. When I walked up to the house, I saw a shadow looking out the window, so at that point, I really had no choice but to go up and knock. So I did, and it was a man in his late 40s, early 50s. He admitted he was stealing power from me, however, other than that, he's been living off the land and even has a garden and plants for food. I'm probably not going to evict him or anything, I could care less as long as the guy's friendly. I told him to come over tomorrow and we can talk. I was going to take some pictures, but it was dark, and he would know I was taking pictures because of the flash. I didn't want to anger him or anything, so I guess I'm going to talk with him in the morning. I will most likely let him stay. Sorry for the boring ending. Nobody died tonight. So while this certainly would be something that would creep me out if I was in this situation, it seemed to have went over pretty well for the most part. And, well, that's it. Right? Well, f now I heard a gunshot. I didn't shoot off a gun and it sounded like it was from a distance. He wasn't shooting at me. Somebody is knocking at my door. I see two shadows, not one. The guy is not alone. I'm not answering the door, I'm staying in my house. I have a shotgun and I'm in a good position. I have a handgun and an assault rifle as well. I'm in a corner so I don't have to watch my back. From here on out, things seem to start going down majorly. As more updates are given, we read the OP fire at someone, call the police, and that's just the beginning. Eventually, the people from outside get in, where the OP shoots and kills one. And the craziest part is how it ends. Guys, my house is on fucking fire. The other guy lit it on fire. I'm now in my car, going down the road. The craziest part of all is that he shows proof. He also shows an image of cops arriving on the scene with this message. The police are on the scene along with a few fire trucks. They got here pretty fast. Much faster than they said. And then we reach the final message, where things end abruptly. Guys, I'm being detained and I've been asked to get out of my car. Sorry, I'm being arrested it seems. Might just be a temporary thing, but the cop isn't taking no for an answer, sorry. Watch the news in the morning for this. And after that, the OP did not return. In general, what do we think about the legitimacy of these posts? Well, not likely. The only tricky thing going against all of this is the images given, especially the house fire one. Reverse image searching them does not give us any matching images of them at all. Now the police image is one thing. It's very possible to take an image of cops driving by or being on a scene or something. That much isn't hard to do. But the house fire image is not exactly the everyday occurrence. This definitely airs a piece of legitimacy on this whole thread that is very unusual for ones like this. But to me, there is only one thing that makes this story fall apart, and that is the fact that it was constantly being updated the entire time. To stop and think for a moment, if you were feeling extremely threatened by some people, and then a full-out gunfight started, would you be writing to 4chan in the midst of all of it? I don't think so. The one last piece of information that could seemingly prove or disprove everything here is the ending. Watch the news in the morning for this. This is something that has happened multiple times on 4chan, and actually ended up proving posts that had happened before, usually in very dark ways. But this post does not seem to be the case here. For one, the poster never said what state they even lived in, which makes a new search very difficult. I tried searching possible articles about house fire gunfights during the dates right after all these posts came to 4chan, but that proved futile in the end. Overall, I do not think this post was real. Despite how interesting the images that were given to us were, there must be some sort of explanation for those, because to me, the amount of things going against this story is a little too much for me to believe it. However, the thought of somebody living on your own property, unbeknownst to you, and ultimately striking, sure is a scary one. For our next post, we're moving into the straight up absurd. I'd like to introduce you to the 4chan Joker.
As far as these normal 4chan posts go in these videos, this one is entirely unique, because I can't even find the first instance of this occurrence happening. All I know is that it happens in waves, and it happens often. Watch the news tomorrow. 5 p.m. I'm serious. Let me ask you something, B. How many times have you been treated like... How many times have you felt excluded? How many times have you had to put on a happy face going out into the world? A fake happy face. Let me tell you, none. You live your lives happy while I, well, suffer. We're all the same who bully me and stop me from being God. You shall see soon. Chaos. I am not normal, Anon. I would never change who I am, and people have to respect me for what I am. This is what will change in my world. Chaos. Controlled, but chaos. I've had enough. Check your news tonight. Don't want you to miss out on the birth of a new world. As you can see, these posts seem to depict a 4chaner dressing up and doing makeup as if they were in fact the Joker. He tries to speak like him and gives vague threats such as saying to check the news in case something happens. Oh, Oannons, you think you can help me? In reality, I am as crazed as they come. Go on, keep laughing. Joker always has the last laugh, no matter what. Chaos, suffering, repentance. The voices must be right. In some of the other posts, the Anon also shows his weapon collection, which is quite concerningly large, to say the least. Really, the craziest thing about this whole ordeal is just how frequent it is in general, and because of that, other Anons are, as a result, either very dismissive of this entire thing, or very aggressive. 4chan does have a history of threats actually being carried out on occasion, but it also has a history of threats of this sort being made where nothing at all winds up happening. The common belief among 4chaners is that this is some sort of LARP, and that's a belief that does seem to make sense. His warnings have been given several times, and to our knowledge, and especially with him still giving them after over a year of doing these posts, nothing has seemingly happened yet. But even in terms of LARPs, this one still feels very weird. The amount of time spent making these posts on a platform that is entirely anonymous does perplex me a bit, as does just how long this entire thing has lasted. From what I can find, this has been going on for over a year, and still to this day you can occasionally find him on B doing it some more, and as I said, there would be like hundreds of these posts, all written uniquely and with different images each time. It's an unusual situation. The one other question left here is simply, who is this person in the first place? Due to the face of the person being shown in the majority of these images, it seems that this would make that search a lot easier than most cases like this and could also serve to definitively answer the LARP question once and for all. Well, the results are definitely fascinating. After reverse image searching a number of these Joker images and finding nothing, I did finally get lucky with one of them, which brought me to a Reddit post of a cosplayer, featuring this image which has been used in multiple posts. If you go to the Reddit profile, it also provides an Instagram link, which shows basically dozens of the other images that had been used in these posts. If you look at how this user types, it's pretty clear that this is most likely not the same guy. That would mean that the 4chaner somehow found these images and used them for all of his posts. With that being said, there is still one more mysterious thing left. There is one image that stands out, and it's of a paper that actually says Joker, with the date that this specific post was from, right next to a gun which happens to look like some of the many other weapons that this account had shared, and that were also used. Obviously, the inclusion of the paper makes this one stand out more, and the reverse image search results for this one are extremely weird. The image is no longer available or is not publicly accessible. Out of all of the reverse image searches I have ever done, I've never ever had a result like that come up before. 
If there is a specific reason for it, you can definitely feel free to comment below what may have happened. But it almost seems like an image was purposely removed off of a social media platform or something like that. Or whatever page had this image recently went private. But that's all I can think of. Whatever the case, this one image definitely adds a strange layer to this whole thing. But if you look even closer at the image, I think I also found something that may even make it fall apart too. Take a look at the hand and paper, and notice the very slight black outlines. If you take a picture of your hand or simply place it in front of a camera, it's not going to have black outlines like that. This looks like a hand that was cropped out of some other sort of background and placed here next to the weapon. As you can see, this incredibly strange series of posts does seem to be a LARP after all. But even with that being said, this was still by far the most absurd one I have ever seen, and I think it definitely deserved its spotlight on this fine deep dive. And for our final post of the night, we have a short one simply about the OP asking about the backstory of a very haunted image. Post picks you want the story behind. In before haunted house. Never saw proof of this. The image in question seems to depict two bloody men. The one closer to the camera has it dripping down his chest and is smiling, while the other guy seems to be on some sort of table, with his legs completely opened obviously showing where the blood came from. Strangest of all, both of them are smiling, and the guy with the cut open leg has his thumb up to the camera. The rest of the image isn't much, but gives a small idea as to where these two people might be, which is important. The room in general is small, dark, and cramped, and there's blood all over the walls too, even including a handprint. Overall, all of this definitely has me suspicious. There have been a few legitimate cases of consented which is what I saw some people theorizing, but I definitely don't think that is the case here. If you look at the image closely, it almost appears as if the person on the table is actually standing behind the table and is just lined up with a fake pair of legs. The aforementioned handprint on the wall and the overall blood on the wall looks pretty artificial too. Once again, we reverse image search this image, and this time it finally worked. I knew that with a super high quality image of this sort, there would be loads of information about it. And sure enough, people all over the internet have asked about where this image came from. And there's even been articles made about it, one of which actually giving us our answer. This image resides within the Atlanta Chambers of Horror, a haunted house within the area that prominently features gore effects exactly like the one pictured above. So there you have it. This extremely mysterious and freaky image has been solved, much to the poster's dismay. It was in fact from a haunted house. And like last time, we do have a bonus post, so consider yourselves lucky once more. The paintings indicate that early humans had some pretty heavy stuff weighing on their minds, archaeologists said. A head time scare, Grug. Grug not know what do. To be honest, I've never heard anything deeper. Lines like this are ones that truly stick to you. The plight of Grug is one of hardship, and to me, there was no other possible way to end this video than by sharing it. And that's gonna do it for this edition of 4chan Deep Dive. As you can see, this one was a little bit longer than usual, which we felt was definitely fitting for it being the 10th edition and the final one of the season. As we said, 4chan is going to be taking a small break for now, but again, it will definitely be back, I promise. While 4chan certainly is a website full of depravity, it has an aura that always brings us back. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, make sure to like this video, make sure to comment down below, make sure to send in whatever websites you want us to cover, send in some creepy posts from around every corner of the internet. 
All of our social medias are linked in the description below. Our Patreon Debunk Plus is $1 a month and you get access to a ton of stuff, especially the uncensored version of this video. As always, my name is Seth from Debunk File. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.